After two really good deluxe action figures of this line, this is the figure that I've been dreading the most. No pun intended. This is Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Number 3, Crowbar. But before we take a look at the action figure at hand, let's put him aside for a moment and take a look at the packaging as per take of every single video review on this channel. It is as similar as the other packages in this line, which is very collector friendly, minus the fact that Hasbro scuffed up this one here. So, anyway, you can't win them all, right? Well, this is the one where I truly can't win. Anyway, let's do this. So, we got a nice picture of Crowbar here for the front profile of the uh, package. Looks really nice. I like the fact that he's screaming at somebody. That's very cool. Studio Series Decepticon logo, Crowbar. Uh, let's see, ages 8 and plus, Hasbro's logo right there, Takara Tomy at the top, indicating that they are in fact dual branding from this point forward. Transformers, Dark of the Moon logo to let you know that this is where the character comes from in the film series. Transformers logo right here, leading up to the Misaligned Generations logo at the top right corner. On to the side here, we got a nice picture of Crowbar once again, well a little bit more in detail for what they could actually fit on the side here. We've got the open window packaging side here where there would be an Autobot logo instead of a Decepticon logo, but I took the stage out already if you hadn't noticed. Here's the authentic Transformers logo, which represents once again that if it doesn't say authentic, this would be a knockoff figure on the side here where everyone will be displaying their boxes, even me because this side is banged up. We got Studio Series number three, Crowbar's picture yet again, and Deluxe Class representing what class he is, in case you didn't know. On the back here, we've got Transformers Dark of the Moon, Crowbar's name. We've got information regarding the stage that this figure will come with, which is the high-speed chase scenery. 20 steps of transformation from robot mode to vehicle mode, from vehicle mode to robot mode. Here's the summary of Crowbar here, which pretty much states that Crowbar obliterates oncoming obstacles to reach the Autobots. And that's all you need to know because that's all he really did in the film. Other figures available in this line is Bumblebee, Decepticon Stinger, Autobot Ratchet. Build the cast. That should say collect the cast because we're not building anything. Anyway, that's it for the packaging. Here's the instructions that I have to show off in this video once it focuses. I am done. All right, now here's the figure again. Lower the camera so you can see the figure. And um, just to let you know, to be forewarned, do not be confused, but here is Decepticon Berserker, the previous mold. As far as I know, this is the exact same mold, just extensively retooled. Um, anyway, he is the exact same SUV as Berserker, crowbar. Looks as identical as they come with this guy, and I'm telling you, the only real way to tell the difference between these two is to flip them upside down, because the chassis of the vehicle forms is completely different. With Berserker being more streamlined and compact, to tell you the truth, when compared to Crowbar here, which happens to have quite the gap going on here, and the fact that his dreads are sticking out, because even the instructions don't tell you how to put these things away. At least they don't tell you how to put them away too well. And he's also got his toes sticking around the tires, which does look kind of awkward from the back profile, as you see. So, yeah, there's a lot going on this guy. It's just fighting against him. And, you know, to his credit, where credit is due, at least he still does roll pretty nice, even if there is stuff sticking on the ground. It doesn't really bother him. See? He rolls just fine. So... There's some positive. So anyway, let's do some more size comparison with this guy. So here's the Septicon Stinger and Bumblebee from this wave. And as you can see, 
scale wise these figures look good next to each other and that's why I really appreciate the Studio Series 4. They at least give us some really good scale accuracy with these figures while trying to throw in a mix. <laughs> of accuracy and fun transformations and to say fun transformation with this guy is a bit of a stretch in all honesty but before we get to that there's one other thing i need to get through and that is these things yes he comes with the exact same weapon as his dreadbot partner berserker whose name i almost forgot yeah they're the exact same thing i'll show you real quickly see now I got four of these blasted things, but uh, yeah, if I lose one or two of them, here we go. I got some to replace, so it's not a real loss anyway. But um, what really bugs me is the way that these are stored. Instead of being underneath the chassis of the vehicle, no, you got to tab them in on the side here, which they don't really peg in too securely. As you say, they really stick out so badly to the point where if you go to tap them well this one's pretty good but if you tap this one i mean you can see it's pretty damn wobbly it's ready to pop out very easily so you know there's really no other way to work around it because even though i tried to find ways to stick it underneath here and i'm sure there is a way the dreads keep pushing them back out so it's like a real loss with this guy i mean from the front he looks okay from the side he looks okay as well but going to the back you can see there's just so much going on here too much junk in the trunk at this point and um you will notice that he doesn't really like to stay too well tabbed in secureness i mean it's just there's so much going on with this guy. It's just as bad as Berserker. So, um, you know, it, it being the, the exact same mold in a way, it just, you know, it makes sense that there would be complications here. Even if the transformation is quite different from one another, they're just pretty much similar in the way that they are so frustrating, in all honesty. Not to the point where he deserves a hammer, but... Um, it's to the point where I really don't want to go through the transformation, but I have to, don't I? So, let's get to it. Right, on into the transformation of this guy. And just like the others, let's take it nice and slow and try not to make this a mess. Even though this will be a mess because everything that we have to do at step one is blow him up. Starting with the front, to these doors here to that and then all this back here just like that lift it up and kaboom <laughs> yeah next what you want to do is untab this section if it hasn't already that will free up the legs just like that and as you can see we got a bit of a robot going on here next step flip down the feet Take this wheel and flip that back. That's going to be some hill support for this figure, which he desperately needs. Fold down that door. Kibble, I know, but hey, it covers up some hollow bits. Same thing on this side here. Flip it down. Flip this back. Flip this down. Now rotate at the thigh. And there we go. There are the legs. Next up, as I go to sit this figure down for a moment so I can raise the camera just a little bit more because we're about to get big on this guy. Alright, so let's keep this folded like this and then lift this up so that will free this section. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a small little compact backpack by the same way that we do it with Berserker. Taking the back section of the vehicle and folding that in on this hinge. Doing the same thing on this hinge here and folding that all in just like that. And now that we got all that situated, let's go ahead and bring up this hinge here, which on mine does not lock in anywhere. It, I don't think it does on any figure. It's just, this is really loose. Yeah. So, 
quality's not best on my figure, but your results might be different. So, next thing to do is to bring down the dreads, like so, just like that. Leave this one up in the air at the moment, and what we're going to do now is come back here and bring down on the hinge to create his arms. Rotate at the shoulder here. Come around this side here, which I'll try to find it. There it is. And we're going to try our best to pull out the hands, because without any fingernails, this is quite difficult, because there is no peg whatsoever around here where you can actually push on it to bring out the hands. You really have to manually force it out, and it is a tight fit to get it in there anyway. So, now that that's all taken care of, there's an arm. Let's go about doing the same on this side here. So, rotate, bring it down, find that opening, which is right here. Good luck to you to getting this out here, because, again, it's a pretty tight fit. So, bring that out now that I got it. There we go, reposition everything to my liking, and we're about there, we're almost there, just not there just yet. What we're going to do next is finish up the backpack now that we got the dreads out of the way, if not push them back down if they came back up on you, and fold up on this double hinge here, and fold down just a little bit like this. Next thing to do is bring up this back section here, which is the front of the vehicle, and... This windshield here is on a hinge itself where you're going to push it in like that and that should secure the backpack in place. Now there's not really much that you can really do about this bottom section here. I mean it's pretty much just a flap for the back of his butt. You can try and push it up if you want but then again it pushes out the hinge here so he's always in a pelvic thrust position if you do that but... You know, again, there's real no clear step of this in the instructions, so you're just going to have to, you know, fiddle with it to your best liking. And then, after that's all said and done, reposition everything to your said choice, and there we go. Here he is in his robot mode, and that wasn't too bad. I mean, yeah, it got a lot easier for me after transforming this guy like maybe six times already just to do one simple video review, which is taking forever here. But regardless, just the whole um, silhouette of him from what you can see, because there's a lot of shadow going on here with such a white background, really does look good. I like the profile of this guy, what he has to offer. He looks entirely different in this design compared to the previous mold which is Berserker. As you can see, the two dreadbots next to each other do look really good. And for a brand new deluxe size line of figures, this is a pretty tall figure. Because, believe it or not, as I go to show you really quickly, here's the very first figure I reviewed of this line. And scale does matter in this series. And that's why I love it so much. Look at that. Look at Bumblebee compared to... Crowbar, it's it's amazing. It's just so really cool how they can make the vehicle modes almost match up as good as they can. And then when they come into robot mode, they're pretty much they're they're doing the same thing. They're they're scaling them up to as accurate as they can come for these designs. It's just really nice. I really do like what this figure is offering here, or should I say this whole series? Because here's Decepticon. Stinger, just so you can get a look at all three figures here. This is a really, really good size comparison here. And this is all I really need to compare this figure with because this is a brand new step in a brand new series that I really do approve of. However, with the figures put aside now, let's talk about the real disappointment about this figure. And it's just the fact that... um. He has some unfortunate issues with the execution in his transformation that's caused quite a bit of some inconvenience with my release. And that is, this app crunch just gets in the way of everything I go about messing with this guy. I go to move the arms, and the app crunch moves with it. I go about moving his head, and the app crunch moves with it. It's that loose. I wish there was actually a tab in a hole somewhere that would lock it 
in this set position, but it just doesn't. And it doesn't help that the backpack gets in the way as well. If this flap goes any higher than where it is right now, because it can due to transformation, he's going to bend on himself yet again. And just having to reposition that every time I go about messing with this figure, I gotta be honest, it's getting exhausting. So anyway, let's take a good look at his face here, because that is a really nice looking face. It really would have been amazing had Hasbro and Takara worked a way to do a hinge joint to his mandibles here so he could have some like jaw action. Not a spring-loaded jaw action, but enough to move it down so we can actually see the rest of the detail on the inside because there's still quite a bit there. He does have sculpted teeth and his eyes are kind of blocked by the mandibles so I don't even know how this guy can actually see. Still though, the details on him is really good. Paint's not much. I mean, we got some shots of red here and for his kneecaps. And we got some red on his claws here or maybe orange if you want to say that. And there really isn't that much of a premium paint job. This line doesn't count on that. But regardless, it is a really nice line. Even if some figures are hit and a mess with other people. This one being a little bit of a toss-up for me in all honesty. Still, let's go through the articulation. He has a ball-jointed head. He's got a hinge joint for up and down movement, like so, if you wanted to. So he's dub stepping or something like that. There we go. We got a hinge joint here at the shoulders due to transformation. We also got ball joints that does allow complete rotation and so on. You do have your bicep swivel joint here, which other figures in this line does not consist of. We got a hinge at the elbow that's single jointed, does get 90 degrees of play. We do have a hinge joint to fold the hands inward just because of transformation. We also got that annoying ab crunch feature, which doesn't really help on my figure, but hey, it's there, and what am I supposed to do about it, right? So we got ball jointed legs that does get this much for kicking forward, that much for kicking back. You can get a split, but it's not a JCVD qualified position, unfortunately. You do have a five swivel joint. You've also got single jointed knees that does get 90 degrees of bend. And the last step in articulation is a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet. And that is pretty much, um, I was about to say berserker, but no, crowbar. This is crowbar in a nutshell. The only thing to show off is his weapons. Once again, they can go in the hands like so. And um, they do actually fit like a glove in this figure's hands, unlike his uh, mole counterpart from the previous run of movie figures. So it does look really good. But you can also take his spike bombs, and just like Berserker, they can be stored on the backpack like this. Just like this, by the hooks. And that's what's considered weapon storage. And just like Berserker, it's kind of useless because they just come off very easily. So, anyway, the figure does have his pros, he does have his cons, and he does have a hard time standing up sometimes. Because, um, you know, he, the fact that he doesn't have any ankle rocker pivots like any of these other figures in this line is just... It's a little unbearable when coming to readjust the figure's feet because it just... It sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't work. The figure will topple over on himself because he does have quite the heaviness and quite the backpack. Maybe not as big as other figures, but it's still enough to gravitate this figure on his back. So, that, I mean, that's really it. There's not much else to say about Berserk or Berserker. See, I told you I was going to say it. Okay, it's Crowbar. So now that we got Crowbar out of the way, let's take a look at um, one other thing that I've just got to be honest is not the best. Um, okay, so I've given some pros about these uh, stages here. The other two were pretty good. Um, unfortunately, Crowbars is very weak. It does not support itself. Even when putting the figure on here, which he barely fits at all, just does not help balance this thing. As you can see, the uh, this is just very weak. It's very flimsy at this point. It's at the point where it might even rip. Even if this is some pretty strong cardboard here, it's, it's folded to the placement where it just, it's not going to help. It just cannot balance itself, and it's always going to topple over. So in order to get this to stand up, I would have to push it all the way back to the back over there, and I, I just can't even reach that. Still, putting the figure on here, and he does look pretty good on it, but 
It also looks a little small for this figure, considering that this deluxe scaled action figure is a little more bigger than your other deluxe figures of this line. And his feet are so big that his toes are always sticking out. I mean, he just cannot sit on this thing just right. Or by that, I mean he can't stand on it. He's always going to be hanging over the edge. That is as best as I can get him on here. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've actually had him stay on this thing. Now, when I let this go, just watch. Make me a liar now. Make me a liar. So, anyway, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work, I guess. So, your mileage will vary on your release. But for my release, it's a little bit of a mix-up. Like I said, this one is a toss-up. I don't know whether I should like it, whether I should hate it. I'm not going to say it's a failure. I'm going to say, at least for my release, it is just not as good as the other two figures of this line. That's not taking any points off of it. I still do appreciate having this that figure. It's just a little more time in the oven. At least this figure. These two are fine in my books. This one here is okay. There's not much else to say. This has been a long video review, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Onward to the uh, fourth and final figure of this line, at least for now. So, questions, comments, you know what to do. Hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you like this video review, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, sub up, because that's becoming very important at this time. And until then, this is the Unprofessional Toy Reviewer, Redis Power, signing off, saying thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you whenever you see me.